Okay, so it's one of those days when my voice is maybe kind of gone again. Sorry, it's coming back soon, I promise. Anyway, today we're going to be discussing a somewhat intriguing update about a very important discovery from a few years back. And it's technically located somewhere right here. The star in the middle, that's the sun. That's our home. And so we're talking about something relatively close to us and something we've discussed very extensively in a video four years ago. This was a very intriguing discovery of what's now referred to as the Radcliffe wave. An unusual wave that seems to be a part of the Milky Way galaxy that surprisingly contains a lot of different star formations, a lot of nebula and molecular clouds forming new stars, and a lot of different types of stars and gas that all seem to form along this strange sinusoidal wave. The sun is right there, next to it. In this case, including some really famous nebula, such as the Pelican Nebula, containing a huge amount of gas and forming new stars, Cocoon Nebula, representing some of the most beautiful nearby nebula in the night skies, mysterious-looking Iris Nebula, a gorgeous reflection nebula that you can usually see with even a relatively small telescope, and of course the iconic Orion Nebula, with a lot of different formations visible inside as well, including the Horsehead Nebula and a few other really important formations. And so a lot of them seem to be along this unusual sinusoidal wave. But now there are some additional discoveries about the wave that nobody expected and technically are difficult to explain right now. I guess let me actually show you because this is a video. It seems to be oscillating, wobbling in the way that you see right here. And it also seems to be moving away from the center of the galaxy just a little bit. But exactly why and what's going on? Well, let's discuss this in this video, but don't I guess expect exact answers yet. First though, okay, so exactly what is this? And more importantly, why and how was this discovered? So the initial discovery was made back in January of 2020. And we've discussed this in the video that you can check out in the description. Essentially, this was discovered once again by accident by using some of the recent data from the Gaia telescope. The incredible telescope that's been actively mapping the night skies, discovering motions of various objects in the Milky Way for the past few years. And in this case, the researchers were able to actually create something that was three-dimensional instead of just two-dimensional. But their focus was very simple. They were trying to take a look at the mysterious structure known as the Gould Belt, which was technically discovered 150 years ago and was a theory that proposed that there was an unusual stellar ring around the solar system that seems to represent a lot of star formation regions and a lot of gas, where many different stars are born, with Sun potentially being one of them, yet somehow the solar system then escaped the ring and basically ended up somewhere in the middle. And to try to recreate this, the researchers used some of the objects from this proposition, including various nebula and various molecular clouds, in order to calculate their exact velocities across the Milky Way galaxy and then plot them in three dimensions. And while well, the result of this plot was not a ring, not a belt, but instead an unusual sinusoidal shape. And this was a really large structure, approximately 9,000 light years in length and going up and down from the Milky Way disk by about 500 light years as well. In essence, disproving Gould's belt theory and discovering that all of these unusual stellar nurseries close to the solar system were basically inside this very unusual wave-like formation. And inside of it, there was just a lot of different types of gas, a lot of different dust, a lot of star-forming regions, a lot of stars, a lot of baby stars, and many, many different, very bright stellar nurseries. And actually, pretty much all of the famous ones. Even the most famous and the closest one, Taurus Molecular Cloud. And that by itself was very unusual. It meant that most of the neighboring star-forming regions were all basically inside the shape. And it also sort of implied that maybe the solar system was also born inside of it as well. Here, at its closest, it was approximately 400 light years away from us, but at its farthest, it was approximately 5,000 light years away. So technically, the sun could have started anywhere in the vicinity. But it was also inside the local Orion arm. So this was a structure inside the famous galactic arm as well. Here's roughly how the galaxy maybe looks like from the top, with the sun's orbit as a yellow circle in the middle, and here's a slightly zoomed-in version showing us the Orion arm, the Sun, the Orion Nebula, and the overall representation of most of these structures nearby. 
And so in this case, the wave would be essentially somewhere right here. One of the links in the description kind of actually shows you every single structure inside of it. And you can kind of see that even though not all of them are exactly on the wave, they are very close to it. But I guess more importantly, based on the motion, we can also assume that the sun was very likely extremely close to the wave for millions of years. And it will probably cross the wave again in the future. We have no idea what effects it might have on us, but it potentially has some. Mostly because here we're talking about extremely high concentration of gas and a lot of stellar nurseries, all basically much closer to each other than anywhere else. But I guess the question is, okay, so how exactly would something like this form? Well, naturally there are not a lot of answers right now, but there are some potential propositions. Maybe a galactic collision that basically left ripples in a very similar way to what we observe in the water when something falls into it. So maybe this is something similar, just a collisional effect that disrupted the Milky Way. It could also explain why the Milky Way galaxy is not actually a perfectly flat shape and why it's sort of tilted as we've discussed in some of the previous videos. Or maybe it's a result of the mysterious dark matter. Or maybe it's just something we cannot explain yet. Either way, it's definitely there. But after four years of analysis, researchers have now discovered additional details. Once again, based on Gaia telescope data, it looks like a lot of these objects are in motion that basically suggests they're doing this. They're oscillating. Creating a kind of a periodic traveling wave with a period of about 95 million years. And in this case, this was discovered by looking at a motion of a lot of baby stars. Specifically baby stars born inside of these molecular clouds. And so by observing their motion inside the gas, this unusual oscillation was revealed across the entire wave. But exactly what's causing this is, I guess once again, maybe not entirely certain. Now in this case, all of this can technically be caused by the gravity produced through normal means in the galaxy, not really dark matter, but these are obviously just some of the first gases and we don't really know for sure. However, there are some hints that maybe a lot of nearby stars and specifically the cluster responsible for the so-called local bubble, also referred to as the local cavity, or basically this relatively huge bubble that contains a lot of objects nearby and represents a lower in density region compared to the rest of the galaxy, and the bubble that was essentially the result of a very large supernova millions and millions of years ago, was probably produced somewhere inside the Radcliffe wave as well. And what's actually intriguing about this local bubble, or local cavity as it's also known, is the fact that it's actually a region of very low density when it comes to interstellar gas. In other words here, the overall density of things like hydrogen is approximately 10 times lower than anywhere else in the Milky Way. And because this region is so large, up to about 1000 light years in size, it's quite likely that this was an enormous supernova, or more likely several major supernova, all happening around the same time. Which essentially cleared up this entire region of most of the gas that used to be here. All of this happening possibly 10 to 20 million years ago, and very likely involved up to 20 supernova exploding one after another. But the fact that the sun is right in the middle is actually completely by accident. It's been traveling through this region for at least 5 to 10 million years, with the overall picture resembling something like this. And so this probably started somewhere in the Radcliffe wave, because that's where we usually see so many supernova happening at once. Or in other words, a lot of different features around us, and a lot of events that the solar system experienced in the last few millions of years, all most likely started somewhere inside the Radcliffe wave. And that of course actually includes most of the supernova that at some point reached planet Earth. And that of course also includes Betelgeuse, which will explode in the future. But that's pretty much where the facts end and where a lot of questions begin. Because at this point, we still have no idea where the wave came from, why it seems to contain so many active regions, why it oscillates the way it oscillates, and I guess more importantly, if this is the only such structure in the Milky Way, or I guess more likely, it'd be interesting to find out how many of them are there in the entire galaxy and how they're possibly connected. And also, I guess, is this some kind of a universal concept that applies to many galaxies, or is this something that's unique to the Milky Way? Actually, as you can see, it does look very different if you look at this straight on. So it's definitely not super straight. 
And so chances are we might have some answers after more data from Gaia Telescope and from additional surveys, but at least for now, for probably a few more years, it is going to remain a mystery. A mystery that maybe at some point someone will solve, but we're definitely not solving anytime soon. But in my case, I'm sort of more intrigued by the potential effects this could have on a solar system. For example, the discovery that this has a 95 million year period might have certain correlations to what happens on planet Earth. And if so, uh, yeah, that would be interesting to find out. But I guess more importantly, it'd be really intriguing to find the exact connection to the solar system as well. Is this basically our birthplace? Or is this just someone else's birthplace and we're kind of passing through it? And if so, where's ours? And so hopefully in the next few years, we'll have some of these answers. But until then, check out some of the previous videos in the description. Thank you for watching, subscribe, share this with someone who has learned about space and sciences, come back tomorrow to learn something else, support this channel on Patreon by joining channel membership, or by buying a wonderful person t-shirt you can find in the description. Stay wonderful, I'll see you tomorrow, and as always, bye-bye.